Hey, I'm Hallie. And I'm Lena. And this is a very special calculus edition of Whitman Shorts. Hey, how should we introduce our first story? Uh, I was thinking that we could relate it to related rates. Let's go to Hallie with this story about a new pool. Hey Whitman, this is Hallie reporting for Whitman Shorts. School's winding down and summer's right around the corner, and nothing screams summer more than a day at the pool. I took a look at how you can make a day at the pool an integral part of your summer experience. This pool here is five feet deep and eight feet across. It can be represented by the function y equals five x to the fourth over 256. So first, I'm going to sketch out the graph and write all of the given information. We are going to revolve the first quadrant of this graph about the y-axis. Because we are revolving it around the y-axis, we need to rewrite our function in terms of y. Our limits of integration also need to be in terms of y, so we are going to use 0 to 5, the height. Once the integral is complete, we get a volume of 53.333 pi cubic feet. I then added a hose that pumps out water at a rate of 7 cubic feet per minute. This pool has jets at exactly two and a half feet from the bottom, so we're going to find how fast the height is increasing as soon as it hits these jets. Again, I'm writing out all of my given information. In the volume integral, we set h as our upper limit so we're able to find the volume at any height. I then take the derivative of the volume function so we can set it equal to volume with respect to time. To take the derivative of the integral, I just plug in h for y and then multiply it by dh dt. I then plug in 7 for dv dt and 2.5 for h to find that the height of the water is changing at a rate of 0.618 feet per minute when the water hits the jets at 2.5 feet. Thanks, Hallie. You're an awesome reporter. Yeah, that was really cool. You know what else is cool? Ice. Let's send it over to Hallie again with a story about melting polar ice caps. If you've listened to the news any time in the past few years, you would know that global warming has really become a heated topic for discussion. One of the repercussions of global warming is melting ice caps. Our story revolves around a polar bear that was found on a small iceberg. We are going to find out how much area the polar bear still has on his melting iceberg. I'll start off by drawing the graph that represents the iceberg. The equation is the polar graph, r equals theta plus cosine two theta. To find the area, I just used the formula 1 half, the integral from 0 to pi of r squared d theta. This gives us an area of 5.95 square miles. Researchers set up on the iceberg in order to more closely study this polar bear. Researchers know that the bear is located at the x-coordinate x equals negative 2 miles, but they need to know the theta value that corresponds to this location. In order to use the x-coordinate of the polar bear to find the value of theta, we have to convert from polar to rectangular. We can use the equation x equals r cosine theta, then we can simply plug in negative 2 for x and our original r equals equation for r. I then graphed y equals negative 2 and y equals theta plus cosine 2 theta cosine theta on my calculator with a window from 0 to pi and got that it intersected at theta equals 2.442. Researchers then put a GPS tracking device so they can track the polar bears from the headquarters. Now I have to find the farthest distance from the research center, located at the origin, the polar bear can travel so that the researchers can attach a tracker with the proper range. To do this, I have to find the maximum of the r equals equation. If I set the derivative equal to zero, I can find the maxes and mins. The derivative, dr d theta, is 1 minus 2 sine 2 theta. I'll set it equal to zero and simplify it down to sine two theta equals one half, then two theta equals pi over six, and finally theta equals pi over 12. I'll then take the theta value and plug it into the original r equals equation to get that the farthest distance away the polar bear can be from the research center is 1.128 miles. Thanks, Hallie. Awesome reporting again. Watching that story made me really cold. You know what the polar opposite of cold is? Hot. You know what's hot right now? Sports. Sports. Welcome to Short Center. Let's see what our mathletes are doing in the off season. 
I'm here with athlete and student Olivia Myers, or more commonly known as the square root of negative one, because these legs cannot be real. So, Olivia, as an athlete and student, what do you do in your off season? Five minutes of calculus every day. I watched Whitman basketball players Abby and Olivia Myers and recorded some information about their velocities while they were playing a game of friendly pickup. Abby's velocity can be represented by the graph shown here. Olivia's can be represented by the function f divided by x ln of 2x to the third. I want to know their velocities at t equals 3. To find Abby's velocity, I just look at the y value of the graph at t equals 3. I get that Abby's velocity is 4 meters per second. To find Livy's, I need to plug in 3 to her given velocity equation. I then get that Livy's velocity at t equals 3 is 0 0.334 meters per second. Livy is going slower, so I need to make a substitution. Oh, no! Pass the ball! Oh. You stop! Next, we want to find their position at t equals 5. We have to integrate both functions because the integral of velocity gives us position. We can use the geometric shapes of Abby's graph to simply take the area. Once we add up the areas of the various shapes that make up the graph, we get Abby's position to be 9.75 meters. Now to find Libby's velocity. We take the integral from 1 to 5 of Libby's velocity function. We need to do a u sub where you set u equal to ln of 2x to the third. Then d will equal 6x squared divided by 2x to the third dx. This simplifies to 3 over x. We can pull out the 4 and the 1 third to the front of the integral because they are constants. The completed interval is 4 divided by 3 ln of ln of 2x to the third from 1 to 5. This then simplifies down to Libby's position being 2.767 meters. And now I want to know if Libby will ever have the same acceleration that Abby does at t equals 4.25. Abby's acceleration is given by the slope of her velocity at that time, which in this case is negative 8 meters per second squared. We then take the derivative of Libby's velocity. We have to do a chain rule followed by a product rule, which includes another chain rule in it. I then take Abby's acceleration of negative 8 meters per second squared and set it equal to Libby's acceleration equation. I find that x equals 1.192 seconds using my calculator. This means that at 1.192 seconds, Libby's acceleration will be equal to Abby's acceleration at 4.25 seconds. Thanks, Emily. And now, we're going to go teach Whitman some math. So, Ms. Thatcher, yes. we are given this graph, and we're trying to find g of 4. So, if this graph is of f of t, we need to find the integral from 1 to 4. So, what we do is 3 over 2, which is the area of this, plus 1, plus 1 half, the area of this triangle, minus 1 half, because this is negative area, and we get 5 over 2. Yeah. Can I show you guys how to find the absolute minimum of this graph? But I know how to. I'm not oh. a help. Okay, okay. I'll see. So, to find the absolute minimum, we know that g, which is the integral of f of t, is increasing on negative, on negative 2 to 3 and decreasing on 3 to 4. So we know that the absolute minimum is going to be on an end point. So what we do is we find g of negative 2 and g of 4 and see which one is less. And it's negative 6, which is the minimum value. Do you get it? Yes. Woo! Yes. Math! Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mr. Reed, I want to teach you how to do a Riemann sum. Hold on, you actually got the thing going. <laughs> it's a read me <laughs> Don't give me that. Look, Mr. I'm gonna look at you this way. You gonna come in there, you see me eating a grapefruit, got my got my protein bar going, and you gonna ask me about a math problem. Hey! Hey! <laughs> nope! Do you wanna learn math? Ah. Can someone help me find a point of inflection on this graph? 
right at the top. That's right, actually. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Will you help me with my math homework? Uh, yeah, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so we know that at x equals 1, that is one of the points that you can look for in this problem. On negative 2 to 1, g double prime of, of x equals f double prime of x, which is greater than 0. So you know there's a min there, right? Right, duh. Let me teach you math. Let me teach you how to do this math problem. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Here. At 1? Yeah. How come? Because uh, the F, F prime G is a uh, max. You got it right. Good job, Fidel. Thank Thanks you. for your help. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> um, I just want to know what your favorite thing about Miss Holloway last year was. Okay. Probably the banana prank. Enough said. Yeah, you know Miss Holloway plays us the Disney Princess Project all the time. I do now. I enjoy her funny stories about her breaking her ankle and her jokes. All right. <laughs> Can I teach you how to do an integral? From 1 to x. I don't know what an integral is. Okay, so now, how would we find what the absolute minimum of the graph is? Wait, is the minimum negative 6? Yes, it is! Wow! 4. Good job, Sarv. Good job. <laughs> Do you want to learn math? <laughs> Mrs. Holloway. <laughs> so, OMG. So what do you want me to do? So we need to find the area under this curve, under this oh my graph. Gosh. The area under this curve. Yeah. The area under that curve. I'm not taking BC count. Well, you should. Sorry. Take BC. I'm taking multiple All right then. <laughs> Well, that's it for the calculus edition of Whitman Shorts. Maybe Shorts should integrate math into their episodes all year. Well, I'm Hallie. And I'm Lena. And see you next year. <laughs> I won't be seeing you next year.